So I'm just going to go straight into introducing Ria Bartlett, uh, lead producer on site learning at the British Library, and she's going to talk about the Teaching and Learning Award. Okay, thank you, Mahendra, um, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. This is my first BL Labs um, Award, so it's very exciting. Everyone loves an award. Um, so my name is Ria Bartlett. I'm the um, on-site um, lead producer for the learning team. Um, and the learning team are responsible for leading on all of the library's engagement with schools, that's students and teachers, young people, families, community groups, and also adult learners. Um, and we deliver a program um, both on site, but also online um, and nationally as well. So I'm very excited to present the award today for, um, for teaching and for learning. Um, just to say my colleague and head of learning programs, Alex Whitfield, um, was part of the judging panel for these awards, but um, unfortunately she couldn't be with us um, today. So I'm representing... Um, so I think as Mahendra alluded to a little earlier, um, this is one of the newer awards um, for BR Labs, so we had fewer entries compared to some of the other awards, um, but nevertheless we received three really strong um, and exciting entries. So without further ado, I'm going to announce the runner-up, um, which is a joint proposal between the University of Waikato in New Zealand Concordia University in Canada and Queen Mary University in London. So this is an educational research study into the development and the evaluation of domain-specific language derived from PhD abstracts. The project uses the British Library's electronic thesis online service and is built using an interactive called FLAX. FLAX is an open source um, software for uptake in English for specific academic purposes programs at Queen Mary University. So a big congratulations to the team. Um, and I'd now like to invite, I think they're here, is it Alana Fitzgerald and Chris Mansfield, if you want to come up to the stage to accept your award. So hi everyone, um, I'm Alana and this is Chris. Hello. Um, so we'll just go through it very quickly because I think your introduction was very clear. Um, so we're just operating. So ethos for academic English, um, basically we're both language teachers. So the interface here in this project is between language education and computer science. So our colleagues back at uh, the University of Waikato in New Zealand, they're computer science. And Chris and myself um, have a background in academic English language teaching. Um, and more recently, I've gone into open education. So I um, just reached out to Sarah Gold, um, who's um, heading up the Ethos project here. And her being um, an openness um, champion um, was very good at responding to our request of, you know, would it be possible for us to work with the PhD theses that are um, contributed by UK universities um, here in the UK. So, um, so I think we hit on the right person, uh, I would have to say that. Um, she was uh, immediate in her response and she welcomed us here. And, and Chris is really doing a lot of the work with um, testing the systems out with students. So we'll just really quickly go through some of the features and then Chris will talk about how his students have used it. Okay, so these are the team members over in New Zealand, Professor Witten and Xiao Chun, uh, Dr. Xiao Chun Wu, uh, myself and Chris. And for us, the big, the big focus of this project was reuse of artifacts of the academy, and by artifacts we mean the texts, because as academic English language teachers, we're always trying to get our hands on texts. Mm. And if you want to put those out on the web, you need to have some access permissions. But teachers are well known for, for stealing things and reusing them in their classrooms. But as you know, the classroom is the secret garden and what stays in the classroom, you know, um, and all that. <laughs> so something like that. So, um, so basically, you can browse the collections um, by discipline. And we're using the Dewey Decimal System here, um, as you can see, economics, education, so on. I th we're going to rebuild the collections this summer in New Zealand, so this Christmas, and try and bring more um, 
more specificity into that um, browsing capacity. So what types of economics, what types of education, and so on. Um, search capacity, so you might be able to see just the words in blue there. They are um, what we call the derivatives or word families. So they're all hyperlinked. So you can search for original, but also originally, and so on. And um, here, in the physical science, sciences, original is used in quite a different way, say, from the humanities, where there would be a lot of um, instances of, for example, original contribution to knowledge, because that's very, um, very important in PhD writing. Um, wikification, so we know that students tend to come across um, difficult vocabulary, even language teachers for that matter, and they will go to Wikipedia. So what we've done here is we've brought Wikipedia into the same interface through uh, wikification using the Wikipedia mining tool. And um, just to enable people to uh, recall what they've been searching for and to save key phrases and linking out to further larger databases. So we have larger collocations databases, um, academic, corporate, and so on. So just to really boost um, what, what's here at the British Library and to take that wider, linking it up to different collections. Okay, so thank you very much to Sarah, particularly, and mm. to Mahandra, who I've just met recently, and of course, to somebody like Chris, who's just been so brave uh -huh. at trying to push this through to, at his institution. I'll it's not that. always easy. Um, the main thing I want to say is to echo the um, thanks that Alana said to the British Library, because what you've effectively done is given me an enormous Christmas present. Um, because what we effectively now have is a resource to add to the teaching repertoire for language and literary dis development in UK universities that outstrips anything that was really there before. Um, by virtue of the British Library kindly giving us access to this information, what we've now got is a 12 million word corpus that students can engage with, confident in the knowledge that what they're looking at is language that's authoritative, that's genuinely reflective of the way that language is being used in UK higher education at the moment. So once again, thank you very much to the British Library, to Sarah in particular, and of course to BL Labs for recognising and acknowledging it. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, so congratulations to Alana, Chris and the team. So now moving on to the winner. And the winner is Library Carpentry. Um, so this is led by James Baker from the University of Sussex, um, but it's very much a collaborative project made up of individuals and organisations from across the globe. The project is a series of courses, methodologies and tools to introduce programming to library staff based on British Library data. So big congratulations um, to everyone that was involved in this project. Um, and I think James is here, so I'd like to invite him to the stage to accept his award um, and also to say a few words. First, it's an honour to accept this award on behalf of Library Carpentry. Um, before I go any further, I want to linger on the people who are on the screen. Um, and they're the people who've made this happen. They're the people who volunteered their time to the cause. Um, I want you to imagine for a moment there's not a tall, blonde bloke in front of you. Um, but Belinda, who's been making everything happen in Australia and is probably practically in charge now. Um, or Owen, who's here, who's our metadata, sorry, our Open Refine guru, or Juliana, who works a lot on metadata specialisms, or Mathieu, who keeps our infrastructure running, or Anelda, who seems to be badgering most librarians in South Africa to get involved, or Ernesto, who helped first, um, helped organise and support our first workshop, or Jez, who's been sorting out things like our landing pages and our analytics, um, or Caitlin, who kept me in check during our first run, or indeed any of the people, many of whom actually aren't on the board there, who've um, made library carpentry happen and without whom it would never have happened. So although I'm accepting this award, I'm only really doing so on behalf of all these people. Um, people who coordinate, who run, who sustain, and who inspire this thing called library carpentry just as much, if not more, um, than I do. So I'm kind of here to kind of cheerlead um, their collective awesomeness. Library carpentry exists because librarians play a crucial role in world-class research. 
And in most disciplinary areas today, world-class research relies on the use of software. There are established non-profit organisations, such as Software Carpentry and Data Carpentry, from whom we get the Carpentry moniker, who offer introductory software skills training programmes um, for the needs and requirements of research scientists. What Library Carpentry does then is offer a comparable introductory software skills training programme um, with the focus of the needs and requirements of library professionals. And by software skills, I mean coding and data manipulation um, that go beyond the kind of familiar use of office suites. As librarians have substantial expertise working with data, we believe really that adding software skills to their armory is an effective, important use of professional development resource that benefits not just library professionals, but those people with whom they collaborate and work. Around a year ago, um, we tested the viability of library carpentry with a, pro a workshop programme at City University London Centre for Information Science. Um, that was supported by the Software Sustainability Institute, um, of whom I'm a fellow, and who work to cultivate world-class research with software. We had 59 participants from 14 institutions um, who attended the event, so we thought it was quite a bit of a success. Um, since then, 13 workshops have run in seven countries across four continents, and our training materials have been developed substantially. Um, we now have half-day lessons which double up as self-guided learning materials on the basics of data and computing, on version control in Git, on using a command line prompt to manipulate your data, on normalising data in OpenRefine, and on working with databases in SQL. And we'll soon be having something on Python. Now, since the beginning, everything to do with library carpentry has been in the commons and for the commons. Um, it is not tied to an institution or person. We have national representatives who handle requests for workshops, support and advice. Um, a statement of what we are and what we hope to achieve has been published openly. Indeed, being open, I think, is really important to us, being really open in everything we do and our decisions we make. We now have distributed management structure and, of course, our lesson materials themselves as well are published online in open form. Now, what distinguishes these lessons from general lessons on these kind of topics is that the exercise and use cases um, that frame library carpentry are drawn from the, the library practice um, and use as data familiar to at least some librarians. Um, in most cases, what we do then is use open data sets of publication metadata released under an open license by the British Library. So it gives people an in that they may find familiar. Of course, librarianship is super diverse. Um, and yet, most of these roles do converge um, one way or another on metadata. So that British Library open data um, provides an ideal basis for our demonstrations and our exercises. Nevertheless, we really think it's important um, that we recognise the diversity of librarianship, particularly the differences between national boundaries. We do not see ourselves as trying to impose this skill set on library professionals. Rather, we see ourselves as responding to the demand that we see. Um, and if we do have an advocacy role, it's probably slightly softer, arguing librarians have um, that library carpentry provides a set of knowledges that many librarians could usefully deploy in daily practice. So to retrieve information, to work better with systems admins and developers, to critique service providers offering shiny new products, or to collaborate with researchers. So library carpentry then is as much about daily practice as it is about novelty, about dealing with what's in front of us today as much as preparing us for what is coming. Um, and we really hope this British Library Labs Award will encourage more librarians to join us so that the materials we offer reflect the diversity of their professional practice, um, needs, hopes and expectations. Now, of course, to achieve this, um, we need some actions rather than just platitudes. Um, helpfully, uh, the award today comes with some money. Um, I, I have no intention of pocketing this money. Um, neither do the folks involved in library carpentry tend to split it 40 or so ways. Um, rather, we're investing in expanding the collective. So alongside accepting this award, um, I'm announcing a call for workshops. The generosity of British Library Labs gives us around £500 um, to give to an individual or a group who wish to run a library carpentry workshop at their library or for librarians. Um, details on how to apply, including criteria for selection, are available if you follow the URL on the screen. Um, it's also librarycarpentry.github.io if you want a more readable version.
primarily um, what we know, sorry, what we want to know from applicants is what they intend to do and what they intend to spend the money on. And perhaps most importantly, the communities of librarians they want to target and why those communities are important. Um, applications must be submitted by the 16th of December. And although the cash will probably only stretch to supporting a single workshop, we do hope to support as many people as we can who come forward who want to put on a workshop in their area. So all the reigns for me then to say is to thank everyone involved who's given their time to library carpentry over the last year. It's been really amazing to see how this has developed and grown. Um, to thank, of course, the British Library, British Library Labs, and the Mellon Foundation for their support. To thank you for listening, because there's been lots of information today. Um, and to implore you um, to share our call for workshops. And with a bit of luck, um, Owen is tweeting that out right now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>